Welcome to this presentation on Quicka software. Quicka was developed by Jimmy Jardine, a PhD candidate in computational linguistics at Cambridge University. Jardine invented the software when he realized there was no software package on the market that could handle many advanced features of using PDFs for academic purposes. The major features of Quicka include document management, annotation and highlighting tools and annotation reports, document syncing both to an online library and also between computers, brainstorming, an integrated web browser built for academic research, and it's designed for academics. Quicka is only available currently for the Windows platform. To get started with Quicka, you need to go to the Quicka website and download the software and go through the usual software installation steps. Now we're finally inside Quicka. Let's do an overview of the main view. There's a series of buttons across the top. In the main pane, there's a list of your libraries. On the right, there's a link to some podcasts and also information about new features. When you start using Quicka for the first time, you'll have a library with your username and also a guest library. You don't really need the guest library. That's for people who want to test Quicka without signing up. If you want more libraries, you can use the Manage Libraries button. This takes you to the Quicka website where you can add new libraries. Why would you want to do that? Say you're doing research for two major papers, you might want a separate library for each one. Or you might want a library for your articles, but you want to share a library of articles with someone else. You can set up a separate library for sharing. In practice, though, you might only ever need one library, so just start there. Now we'll open a library. Start with the library with your username and click on it to open. Let's tour the screen. We'll start at the bottom left and go clockwise. On the bottom left, we have a small advertisement. There is a premium version of Quicka that has no ads, but the ads in Quicka are pretty unobtrusive. There's no blinking, flashing things, for example. Still, if they bother you while you are working, you can temporarily close them so you can get some real reading done. Immediately above the ad is a section where we have tags for items in the library and also search functions. We'll look at this later when we have some content in there. Above that section, we have some sort options. If you want to browse the articles in your library, you can sort by title, authors, year, and other features. Then there's the big toolbar at the top. Again, if you want to see what any of these buttons are for, just hover your mouse over them to see the pop-up text. I'll go over some of these buttons in more detail in a little bit. Note right above the toolbar, there is a tab that says Home and a tab for your library. You can have more than one library open at a time, and each will show up in a separate tab. If you want to get back to the Home page, you can click on the Home tab. The center of the screen is pretty blank right now since we have no documents, but Quicka has some text giving you basic instructions on how to proceed. Now we'll add some documents to Quicka. There are several ways of doing this. First is the drag and drop method. Open Quicka, open the folder where your documents are, drag and drop the documents into the library. Note that my files have really unhelpful titles like 497311.pdf. I used to waste time changing those titles to something more useful, but I don't do that any longer. You'll see why in a bit. Another option is the Add Files button. In the browse screen that appears, choose the file you want to add. If you want to add more than one file, you can hold the control button while you click on each file. It will then add all of them. You can also add a folder. Click the Add Folder button. In the Browse screen that appears, choose an entire folder of PDFs you want to add. Another option is Add from Import. If you have PDFs in Mendeley, Zotero, or EndNote, you can use this button to import them. This also offers the option of importing BibTeX data. I'll explain more about BibTeX soon. 
you can also add a library. Say you have documents in another library inside Quicka. Maybe it's a library someone else shared with you, or maybe you just have more than one library, but now you'd like to put two or more of them together. You can use this button to import items from one Quicka library into another. Finally, there is the Watch folder. You can tell Quicka to watch a folder for new PDFs. You could set up a folder on your computer, call it New PDFs or something like that, and then every time you download a PDF in the future, you could put it in there. You tell Quicka to watch that folder. Every time you open Quicka after that, it will check in that folder for new PDFs. If it finds any, it will automatically import them into your library. Now let's start talking about bibliographical information. One of the best parts of Quicka is that it helps you organize your files without too much intervention from you. You do not have to retype information about your files. Citations are stored in a format called BibTeX. We refer to BibTeX as a form of metadata, that is, data about other data. A bibliographical citation is a type of metadata. It is data about something else, namely a book or article or other item that you want to cite in a paper. I am now going to show you how we can use the power of BibTeX to get citation information from Google Scholar for our articles. Let's look at our library again. It now has articles in it, but you'll notice that each article has a title and then underneath it, it says unknown year and unknown author. That's because we haven't entered any citation information yet, but we are busy people. We refuse to type these citations over and over. We are going to use the BibTeX sniffer to find the metadata we need. Let's open the BibTeX sniffer and get started. Click on the sniffer button. Let's resize this window by dragging the corners and giving ourselves a little more room at the top where articles will show up in a preview window. Now let me explain what's happening in this window. In the top, we get a preview of the article. In the bottom, Quicka is taking the title of the article and searching in Google Scholar to find the BibTeX information for the article. Before this will work, we have to do one little thing. There is a gear icon in the upper right corner of the search pane. Click on the gear icon, and in the drop-down menu, you want to click on Scholar Preferences. Scroll down the page of Preferences. At the bottom of the page, there is a section called Bibliography Manager. You want to select the option that says Show Links to Import Citations into BibTeX. Make sure BibTeX is selected in the drop-down menu. Once you set that preference, there will always be a link that says Import into BibTeX under each article. Once you find the right article, just click on Import into BibTeX. Notice that the bottom half of the screen now shows the BibTeX information. It has special characters in it like curly braces and brackets, but it's easy enough to read if you want to take a look at it. You'll also notice that the BibTeX information appears in the little box in the upper right of the screen. Once you are satisfied that the information looks correct, you can click on the blue arrow and continue to the next document that needs BibTeX information. There's a little trick here. Quicka looks for the information in the biggest font on the first page of the article and takes it to be the title. But sometimes that's wrong. In this example, it just picked the word integrating, which is not at all helpful and is not the entire title. There's a really great feature here that helps you. If Quicka picks the wrong information for the title, you can just look at the article preview in the top of the window and highlight the title of the article. Quicka will then start a new search in Google Scholar in the bottom window with that new title information. Here's another example where it tried using too much information for the title. I find that JSTOR articles are sometimes a problem because they provide their own cover page, like a fax cover page, before the actual article starts on page 2. But the fix is really simple. Just drag your cursor over the title. Again, as soon as you stop dragging your cursor, Quicka will start another search in the bottom pane. If you did it wrong, don't worry. You can do it again, and it'll execute another search for you. 
As you go along, you will get faster at this, and it will take mere seconds to glance at each article to make sure that the title is correct. Want to go super fast? You can click on the little magic hat button under the blue arrow. That's the BibTeX Sniffer Wizard. What that does is automatically choose the first search result in the list, so you don't have to click on the Import into BibTeX link for each article. If it picks the wrong information, don't worry. You can still scroll through the other results and pick a different article, or you can highlight different words for the title. Now, what if you're going along, clicking through all this great metadata, and then you just can't find the right search result for an article? You have a search box where you can manually enter different words to try a different search. In this example, I try using the first part of the title and the name of the publication. I still don't find useful results, which is rare, but we'll just delete the BibTeX information for this article in the preview pane and move on to the next item. We can come back to this one later and enter information in a different way. Now we're back in the regular library view. How can we tell which papers are lacking metadata? The ones that have BibTeX metadata have a year and an author under the title. The ones that say unknown year and unknown authors are usually the ones that still need metadata. Now we can fire up the BibTeX sniffer again and it will start looking for BibTeX metadata for any paper we have in the collection that still doesn't have any. Or we can click through to an article and manually enter information. Note that if you hover your mouse cursor over the little PDF icon next to each title in your library, you can see a preview of the first page of your article. That's a helpful way to see at a glance if you're looking at the right article. I'll pick the article I couldn't find the right BibTeX metadata for. In the lower left, note that there is a section for BibTeX. Choose the type of item from the drop-down list. This is an article. Then go through the fields and fill them out. Note at the bottom that there are a few blank fields where you could add your own special fields. One of my favorite fields is the comment field. You can make little notes to yourself here. Later, you'll be able to search your library, including anything you entered in the notes. I find, as in this example, that I sometimes can't remember the article title or author, but I can remember who recommended it to me, so recording that is really helpful. When you are done, you do not have to hit a Save button. Just exit the document. The BibTeX metadata is automatically saved for you. If you can't find the BibTeX metadata for an article and you don't feel like entering it manually and you don't want to search for it again every time you open the BibTeX wizard, you can put a pound sign in the BibTeX metadata field and Quicka will not search for that metadata again. Another really helpful feature of Quicka is tagging. I tend to tag my articles in two ways, and I think you might find this useful. I enter a tag with a course number if the article is associated with any particular course, and then I try to add some tags about the topic. To enter a tag in the library view, click in the line with the title of the article you want to tag. Notice the item is highlighted. Then go over to the right column and enter your tag. Just type a tag and hit enter. Notice that if you apply the same tag to another item, the tag will appear in a drop-down list, which helps remind you which tags you've used before. Note, too, that each tag has a little X at the end of it. If you don't want that tag on that item any longer, just click the X at the end of the tag and it will be deleted from that item. I have assigned more tags to things in my library. Once I close my library and open it up again, note that there will be a graph in the left column for each tag. If I hover over the bar, it will tell me how many items have that tag.
Notice immediately above that, it also gives me a text version of that same information. This is not particularly significant in a small collection of articles, but it can quickly grow in importance when you are talking about hundreds of articles. Before we leave tagging, there's just one more feature to see. Quicka has an auto-tagging feature where it tries to find relevant terms and article titles and use them as tags. To look at auto-tags, go to the auto-tag tab in the left column. If you hover over the bars in the graph, you can see the tags that Quicka is supplying. You can vote yes with the green thumb or no with the red thumb. You can also click on the Manage button and enter a list of tags you never want to see again. This feature is still under development, so you can ignore it if you want to. But if you have a lot of articles, it might be helpful because it can supply some tags for you. Let's move on to the article view and tools. Finally, we've got a lot of articles in our library. Now we get to the good parts. We can open an article by clicking in the title or in the PDF icon next to the article. Once we're in this article view, here's a few things to note. At the top of the page, Notice we now have three tabs, one for the home screen, one for the library, and one for this article. We can switch among these tabs if we need to move around. Next, we have a series of buttons across the top toolbar. You can hover over any button to see what it does. On the right, we have the metadata, tags, a review section, BibTech information, and a comment section. On the left, there is a duplicate detection section, which will tell you if there are any duplicate copies of this article in your library. You don't want to spend half your time annotating one copy and then have to start over on another copy because you didn't realize it's the same article. One copy of an article is enough. There is a keyword cloud of the most common words in the article. The advertisement is now on the lower right. Again, we can X out of it if it is bothering us. Let's close it so we can see a few other things. There is a search details section which would have information in it if we were doing a search. There's a citations in your library section. Now hold on to your seats here. This is one of the reasons why we filled in all the BibTech metadata. There are outbound citations. That means if this paper cites another paper in your collection, that other paper will be listed here. There are also inbound citations. If another paper in your collection cites this paper, that other paper will be mentioned here. You will begin to see connections among your papers that you really couldn't find this easily before. There is also an also by these authors section which lists any other articles in your library by the same author. Finally, there is a similar papers in Google Scholar section which lists papers similar to the ones you are viewing. Think about it. This gives you a jump start on finding other articles similar to the one you already have. It's like having a research assistant. Now I'll talk about reading articles in Quicka. You've got the article in front of you. You can just start reading. Or if all of the stuff in the margins is distracting you, or you think the text is too small, you can click on the tablet icon. That makes the article take up the full screen. When you're done with this view, you can just click on the tablet again to go back to the regular view. Now we'll talk about tools. I'll start in the full screen view again. First, we have the hand. That's just for moving around in the document. When you use any other tool and you're done with it, you can click the hand to make the other tool stop working. Next is the Select Text button. Let me back up for a second. You are viewing a PDF, but behind the scenes, Quicka has done optical character recognition on your document. That means you can actually copy and paste text from your document into a word processing document. So I've selected text, and then I can right-click on the text and choose a bunch of different options from the menu. You can copy the selected text into another program like Word. If you just select one word or a few words, you can search the web or search your library for those words. You can look up a word in dictionary.com. You can add the term as a tag for the article. You can use the highlighted terms to search for bib tech for the article. You can highlight a term to use as the paper title, as the author, or if you're looking at an article with more than one author, you can select other names to be added to the author section of the bib tech metadata. Remember to click the hand tool when you are done using the select text tool. Next is the tool for adding a box to annotate the document. 
You use this tool to add a virtual post-it note to your document, but it's even better than that. You drag the box around the text you want to annotate. You can add tags in the tag box. You can type on the highlighted area. Whatever you tag or type here will be searchable later. If you want more options, you click on the little information button in the lower right corner of the note. This lets you change the box color, add more tags, suppress the annotation from an annotation report, which I'll show you later, add a rating, and even enter a follow-up date. There is also a button to delete the annotation. When you're done, click on the hand tool again. Notice that the annotation box becomes transparent so you can read through it in the future. I'm going to add a few more of these to the document for later use. Next is the highlighting tool. Just click on it and drag it on your screen. If you highlight something accidentally, you can unhighlight just by clicking on it again. When you're done with the highlighter, click the hand tool to stop using the highlighter. The next tool is a pen for drawing on your PDF. I'll admit I don't use this much, but I don't have a tablet laptop. If you have experience drawing on your screen with a mouse or a pen input device, this could be helpful. So excuse the demo. When you're done drawing, click on the hand tool again to stop using the pen. Here's the tool for screen capture. Say you want to capture a section of the text, or especially a graph or some other figure. This acts as a screen printing application to take the part you want and put it on the clipboard so you can copy it into another document like Paint or Word. The next tool button is for brainstorming and mind mapping. I'm going to leave that one aside for now. I hope to return to this and other more advanced features in a later video. The next tool button is for finding other documents in your library that cite this document. In this case, no other documents cite the one that I have here. Let's talk about navigation options. The first option gives you one page at a time. The button with the two on it gives you two pages side by side. The button with the infinity symbol zooms out to show you many pages. This is helpful if you want to click to a certain chart or an annotation. You can see them in this bird's eye view. The button with the three dots zooms to the full page again. The button with the one on its side shows the page sideways. Next, we have zoom in and zoom out magnifying glasses. The next button is really helpful for navigation by sections of a paper. Many new PDFs come with section headings that are used to construct a table of contents. If a PDF has that, Quicka will use it. If the PDF doesn't have a pre-made table of contents, Quicka will try to create one by looking for section headings. You can use this tool to jump around to different sections of the document. It doesn't work flawlessly yet, but they're working on it. There are also up and down arrows for going up or down one full page. There's a slider bar for choosing a page as well. These tools may sound minor, but when you think about how annoying it can be to navigate a really long PDF, you'll see that these can save a lot of time and aggravation. Now we'll turn to the last few buttons that are on the toolbar. There's a little video icon that links to Quicka's own instructional video on this section. There's a save button if you want to save another copy of this PDF. You already have a copy somewhere if it's in your library, but maybe you want to have a new copy with a new title so you can store it somewhere else. You can do that easily with this button. There's a print button for printing the document. The hand icon is for emailing and sharing your document. It creates a temporary link to a copy of the document it stores online. The link only works for three days for copyright compliance purposes, so if you send it to someone you should let them know the link only works for a few days. There is a button to convert your entire PDF to text, which is useful if you need to include huge chunks of it in a word processing program. When you click on this button, Quicka will open your default word program and put the text into a new document. You can then save it or copy and paste it from there into something else. There is a button for listening to an audio version of the text. Finally, there is a negative button which can be helpful with some documents since it can make them easier to read. This has been helpful sometimes when I have smudged or spotty PDFs. One of the great features of Quicka is that you can generate annotation reports from the things you have annotated in your documents. Let's close this document and go back to the main library tab.
The annotation report is created for all the documents in your library. So if you have 50 documents, but you only added annotations to five of them, only the annotations for those five documents will show up in your report. Let's imagine you have 300 documents in your library, and they're on somewhat related subjects, but you don't want an annotation report for all of them. You just want an annotation report for ones with a certain tag, or a particular search term, or maybe you just want to pick a few documents in particular. Let's review those steps first. To pick the items with one particular tag, go to your tag list and pick the tag you want. To pick the items that have a certain search term, enter your search term in the search box and only the documents with that search term will appear. To pick just a few items without relying on tagging or searching, look to the right column. Quicka has tips there on how you can select specific documents. The easiest way, I think, is to select the checkbox under the title for the documents you want. Another way is to hold the control key while clicking on the documents you want. There are a few other me methods listed in the right column. Now that you've picked the documents you want, you can click on the Annotation Report button. You will see a pop-up screen where you can change some information about tags. Let's just do this the simple way and select All. An annotation report is generated. At the beginning of the annotation for a document, it lists a brief citation for the document so you can find it again in your library. Then it lists the page number. Then it quotes the comment I wrote on the annotation square, the thing that looked like a post-it note. Then it shows you the text in the PDF, and then it shows you the text in a text format. You can copy this text and paste it into another document if you want. Note with the items I highlighted, it shows me how the highlighting appears, and it also shows me the highlighting in the text version. Note too that if I click on the PDF text in the annotation report, it takes me right to that page in the document. Think of the possibilities here. You can mark your PDFs carefully so that when it is time to start writing, you could work from an annotation report instead of looking at the documents themselves. You can print the report or export it to Word. When you close the report, it is not saved, but don't worry about it. You can generate a new report at any time with just the click of a button. If you really want to save the report, export it to Word so that you can save a copy in Word. There's one last topic I want to cover, and that is syncing. You have all this information you're building around your PDFs, but say you want to be able to access it on the go from any internet connection, or you want to sync it between your office computer and your home laptop, or you just want to make darn sure that this information is backed up somewhere. You have several options. In the library view, there are three buttons at the top that have to do with syncing. Let's start with Sync Metadata. This just syncs the BibTeX information about your documents. This is a great way to just back up that work you did if you're otherwise confident that you'll never lose your PDFs. Quicka gives you 200 megabytes of storage space for free, so the chances of you running out of space while just syncing metadata is pretty slim. You can, however, get more space if you need it. I'll explain that in a minute. Another option is Sync Doc. This saves a copy of your PDF and a copy of all your metadata, including your annotations, BibTeX information, and anything else you have added to the document to your online library. Again, Quicket gives you the first 200 megabytes of storage space for free. If you are syncing a large number of documents, like if you are working on a thesis or a number of articles or a book, then you will need to pay a little bit for some extra storage space, but it's really cheap. Personally, I think spending a few dollars a year for the extra peace of mind of having your data backed up and accessible online is well worth it. If you want to add money to your account, go to the Home tab. Note that there is a link under the name of your library that says Top Up. That's the place where you can add some money to your account to pay for some extra storage space. If you click on that link, it takes you to your online account page where you can pay via PayPal. You might be wondering, how much is this going to cost me, really? Listen, I wouldn't have demonstrated this free software if I thought that there was a big catch at the end. Here's a demo of some space usage. I have 32 documents in this library with some annotations, tags, and other data. Let's go ahead and sync the library and find out. Now we'll view the library online to see how much space we've used so we can get an idea about costs. I'll switch to the Home tab and click on the View Online link under my library name. 
Notice that all of my documents are there, and there's a link at the right to download the documents. Say I wanted to download them while I was traveling, or I didn't have quick application at my disposal. But let me show you the pricing scheme. To store 500 megabytes of documents for a month, as well as upload and download 100 megabytes of documents, will cost you 13 cents for the month. Even a huge library of 1.5 gigabytes of documents with 200 megabytes of uploads and downloads will cost you 36 cents for the month. In other words, an initial top-up of, say, $5 will really go far. As a point of comparison, my library has 32 documents in it, and it is using 34.4 megabytes of the allotted space. So I would estimate that a library of up to, say, 150 documents would probably not require any money at all. One of the great things about syncing is that I can have this same library on more than one computer. Say I add documents and annotations to the library that is on my office computer. Then I go home and open the library on my laptop. I can click on the Refresh Library button on the Home tab, and Quicka will check the online library for new documents and metadata and download it into the library I have at home. Maybe this online backup option just does not interest you. That's okay. You can backup your entire Quicka library into a zip file. Then you can save that zip file on a USB stick, an external hard drive, or some other storage space that you have. Just don't do it on your own hard drive. To do it, go to the Home tab and click on the Backup option. Then you tell Quicka where to save the file. Quicka will save your entire library to that file, which you can then copy somewhere safe, preferably somewhere other than your hard drive. If you ever need to use that zip file, you just browse to it. Then you can browse to the place where Quicka is installed on your computer. It's under the name of the company, which is Quantile. You can then copy your backup folder into your current folder. That's all I'm going to cover in this tutorial. Quicka has many other features. For more information, visit the Quicka website at quicka.com and check out their help and tutorial and FAQ sections.